Howdy folks, hope you're all enjoying your weekend and welcome back to the World of Warships test server. Not the public test server, I realise this can get confusing because the public test server is also up and running. But this is the submarine test server. Now you may or may not be aware that a second round of submarine testing is in progress and there have been some changes both to submarine and anti-submarine combat mechanics. Probably the most significant change for a submarine captain is the addition of a consumable which gives you a fighting chance against those pesky destroyers directly overhead saturating the area around you with depth charges. There's a new submarine consumable and it's this. The maximum depth consumable allows you to exceed the submarine's safe diving depth for anything up to 40 seconds reducing the damage that you take from depth charges. Now that's not the only thing that's changed with submarines, but we'll get onto the other changes when we actually show you some submarine gameplay. There have also been changes to anti-submarine warfare, and that means we're going to be taking a look at destroyers. In the first round of the submarine test, attacking a submarine with a destroyer was a simple matter of sailing over the top of the submarine's location, your depth charge is automatically deployed, and it pretty much 100% of the time guaranteed a dead submarine. Well that's changed. Now you actually have to do something. If you have a look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there's a new consumable attached to my G key. These are my depth charges. Now you have to manually activate the depth charge attacks. You have to judge when is going to be the best time to dump those depth charges on the head of the submarine below. Hopefully you also notice that there are three green bars above that depth charge icon. Now what that means is that you cannot just sit on top of a submarine spamming him with depth charges over and over until he dies. You can conduct a maximum of three depth charge attacks before your charges have to start reloading. Which means that in combination with the submarine's maximum depth consumable, a smart submarine captain is no longer guaranteed to die when he's being attacked by a destroyer. He's still going to take damage because going to maximum depth doesn't mean you take no damage from depth charges, you just take reduced damage. But the fact that the destroyer has to wait to reload his depth charge launchers gives the submarine a fighting chance at being able to avoid instant destruction. In practice what seems to happen is that even if the submarine does survive the initial depth charge attack and the destroyer is forced to wait while it reloads its depth charges, unless the submarine's teammates take an active interest in swatting that destroyer off the surface of the ocean, because don't forget, while the destroyer is attacking the submarine, the destroyer is spotted too. And if the submarine's teammates just ignore a spotted destroyer and allow it to continue dumping depth charges on a submarine unmolested, well of course the submarine's going to die. So to a degree, probably more so than any other class of ship in the game, submarines definitely rely on their teammates for protection. But you can reduce or increase the likelihood that your teammates are going to protect you by not sailing off alone into vast empty open stretches of the ocean where your teammates can't shoot at any destroyers that you happen to bump into. And I appear to have just bumped in to an enemy submarine. Now this is slightly different to what you may have seen in the first phase of the test as well. Submarines being tracked by our sonar, he's within two kilometers, so we automatically get a fix on his location. But that's just telling me where he was when he was pinged. I don't know which direction he was traveling in, and I don't know how fast he was going. So I must stay within two kilometers in order to continue to update that target track. And you can see that it's updated. Nope, there he is. He's been forced to come up to periscope depth. So we'll blat away at him with the guns. Be careful to dodge enemy torpedoes. And he can't outrun me because he's just not fast enough when he's submerged. He wouldn't even be able to outrun me if he was on the surface, because I'm that much faster than him. Okay, I'm going to hit the G key and dump some depth charges on him. And let's see how much damage we do. Now, okay, we've got some hits, but we didn't sink him. So again, I've got to try to guess. I'm going to dump more depth charges just in case. But if he's slammed the brakes on and started reversing, those depth charges are probably not going to do any damage. But they did do damage. I've scored more hits. So, and yeah, the target track just updated as well. So he did carry on moving forward, and he's pulled a slight course change. So I'm going to need to slow down, because I've only got one shot of depth charges remaining before I have to reload. Although my first charge is about halfway reloaded. 
So depending on how long this attack takes, I might actually have another two shots at him with my death charges. Okay, let's speed up again. Get back on top. Target track's just updated. He's attempting to manoeuvre and throw me off his tail, but he's just not quick enough. And none of his teammates are in a position to help him either, which is kind of unusual this early in a battle. But, well, we got him. Second target track just updated there. Now, I don't know if this means there's another submarine here, so I'm going to fire off the spare set of depth charges anyway. But there are no further hits. Now, that's something that could probably be addressed. That was the target track of the dead submarine updating. Which is kind of confusing, because it looked as if there was another submarine there. I mean, why would it show me the target track of a submarine that I've just sunk? But it does continue to display. So that is probably something that needs looking at. But that's our first successful submarine kill. It's definitely not going to be our last successful submarine kill. Now, I have a certain policy regarding attacking other players when I'm on the submarine test server. I don't expect everybody to play this way, but it's what I do. If I'm in a destroyer and you're in an enemy submarine, you're fair game. If I'm in a destroyer and you're in an enemy destroyer, I'm not going to attack you unless I have to, because you're there to see how destroyers work against submarines, not how they work against other destroyers, you already know that. And when I say I'm not going to attack you unless I have to, what that means is that I will defend myself against you, and if you're going after one of my team's submarines, I will attack you. But in most other circumstances, I'll just let you get on with it. But I'm going to make an exception for the Fubuki and the smoke screen up ahead, because if you have a look at the minimap, he's not attacking any submarines over there. <laughs> All of the submarines on my team are at least 10 kilometers away from it. So the Fubuki's dead. Right, who's next? Give me some submarines to kill. Plenty of enemy submarines spotted. We're at the stage of the battle now where they're probably extremely low in their oxygen reserves, so they're having to take the risk of spending more time on the surface or at periscope depth. And that means that it's hunting season for all of the surviving destroyers. And of course, well, anybody can shoot at a submarine on the surface or at periscope depth when they've been detected. Actually, that was one of my major complaints about the first um, submarine test. I'm just pausing here to ensure that we cap this area. Uh, you may recall if you watch that video that I must have fired 40 or 50 shots uh, from a Nunberg's 152mm guns and just couldn't seem to hit various submarines at point-blank range at periscope depth. That no longer seems to be the case. I didn't see it specifically addressed in the patch notes, but I've landed hits on submarines, or at least landed hits close enough with high explosive shells to do damage to them. Now, Jingles, you just said you were going to leave players in enemy destroyers alone. Well, yes, but not when they're attacking my submarines, which that guy that is doing. So we're going to dry them off in order to keep our submarines alive. I'm sure the fella in the U69 over there was very grateful for it. You see, the thing is, if a submarine is being attacked by a destroyer, and that destroyer is allowed to continue attacking the submarine, the submarine's going to die. The various different changes, including the maximum depth consumed, if used correctly, and if the submarine is steered correctly, just means that the submarine is no longer guaranteed to die in the first depth charge attack, which is pretty much what happened in the first version of the submarine test. But somebody still has to get that destroyer off the submarine's back, because if it's not going to kill him with the first depth charge attack, and it probably won't, unless the submarine's already taken heavy damage, it's going to kill the submarine with a second or third depth charge attack. Right now that guider and those two submarines are the only three surviving vessels on the enemy team, and luckily for me, the two submarines are more or less exactly in the same spot, so I'm not going to have to go too far to kill them both. Of course, I'm helped immeasurably by the fact that at this stage of the battle, they're down to their last gasps of oxygen, and they can't stay submerged for longer than a few seconds. I'd like to continue helping out our U-69 against the guider over there, but, well, right now I, I can't. He's pretty much on his own. Luckily, he doesn't appear to have actually needed the help. He's managed to torpedo and sink the guider, which is uh, it's no small achievement, trust me. Um, well that just leaves the two enemy submarines, and I know they're around here somewhere. 
In fact, they're close enough to detect me, and there we go. I'm now close enough to start getting tracking data on at least one of them. Three sets of depth charges, ready to go. I know they'd both taken damage, although I can't remember how much damage this one had taken. The target track is updating. I might be able to get him with one depth charge attack. And he can't escape now. There's nobody left alive to help him. He can't outrun me. As long as I don't outrun him, let's get the depth charges away. This pretty much should be a guaranteed kill. There's the hits. Get the second set of depth charges away. This should finish him off. It did finish him off. There he was. The biggest danger to me at the moment is my own teammates. <laughs> All shooting at these submarines when they broach the surface. And I'm sure that won't change whenever this makes it onto the live server. I'm sure we'll have destroyer captains cursing their teammates for hitting them with high explosive shells when they're conducting close range depth charge attacks on detected submarines. Can you imagine if there'd been a friendly Fuso within about 10 kilometers who was sitting there with 12 14 inch high explosive shells primed and ready to go for when the submarine popped up and he just unloaded right as I was dumping depth charges on him. Yeah, you'll laugh, but it'll happen, I guarantee it. One target left. He's got no chance, of course. I mean, I don't know exactly where... Well, I do know exactly where he is now. <laughs> but because I knew more or less where he was, there's no way he can outrun me. I'm always going to find him. He keeps having to pop up because he's completely out of oxygen. And then he dives again, but for no more than a couple of seconds. And of course, everybody's shooting at him. There are aircraft overhead. I'm shooting at him every time I get the chance as I close into effective attack range for the depth charges. I've got two sets of depth charges ready to go. The third is reloading and will probably be reloaded by the time I get there. So this is guaranteed to be a kill, which will be nice. Okay, now he knows where I am. So now he's going to be maneuvering. There he goes. The target track updated just in time. It's easy enough to correct my course. And we're about ready. Oh, there he is. Well, he's close enough for the depth charges to work, so we're going to let him have it. Get the guns swung around. Give him the good news with those as well. He's probably still close enough for me to hit him with a second depth charge attack, but I, I just want to... I want to drive right over the top of his sub before I expend the final set of depth charges because, I don't know, I just, I just, I just want him to hear the sound of my screws rattling his submarine's casing <laughs> as I sail right over the top of him, knowing that there's nothing he can do about it. So that was fun. I really enjoyed that. I suspect the submarines on the enemy team didn't enjoy it as much because I sank every one of them. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, they've given submarines a fighting chance against destroyers, although, based on the evidence of this battle, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> but, um, you know, as well as the maximum depth consumable, it's also no longer a no-brainer for a destroyer to just kill a submarine in one pass without actually doing anything, because you now have to manually trigger your depth charges. You have to pay attention to the submarine position tracking plot and try to guess which way he's going to stay on top of the target. So there's a there's a bit more effort required on behalf of the destroyer. But what's it like for the submarine? Well, let's find out. I was a little disappointed right at the start of this battle to find that while there were plenty of submarines on the enemy team, there's only one player in a destroyer. Well, hang on, Jingles, isn't, isn't that good news if you're in a submarine? Well, under normal circumstances, yes, of course, because the bot destroyers don't prosecute attacks against player submarines nearly as viciously or single-mindedly as players in destroyers do. Obviously, if you're in a destroyer on the submarine test, it's because you want to attack submarines. But that was kind of the point, because I want to be attacked by destroyers. I want to see what it's like in the second version of the test. I want to try out the maximum depth consumable. So, the fact that there's only one player in a destroyer on the enemy team was a bit of a bummer. So I'm going to have to do my best to find him. Which might not be easy because, well, you know, he's in a destroyer. Uh, so he's going to be hard to spot, and even harder to catch because he's way faster than I am. 
I'm not trying to find him and sink him, you understand. Uh, that's, that's not the point of the exercise here. I want to get depth charged. So, you know, it's going to be easier said than done. But we'll give it the old college try. So, how do you get the attention of a destroyer? How do you convince the destroyer to come at me, bro? Well, first I'm going to have to get myself detected. So I'm just sailing straight forward as fast as I can. A couple of things to bear in mind. More submarine changes. Previously, in the first version of the test, submarines were just as fast submerged as they were on the surface. That is no longer the case. Ooh. Aircraft. Okay. We'll get ourselves spotted by the aircraft. And then because I don't want to get damaged by the aircraft, I just want to give my position away. We'll, we'll dive now that we've been spotted. So any enemy destroyers are going to be going, ooh, ooh. submarines. In fact, there are submarines. There's two of us right next to each other. Now, you may have noticed that when I was on the surface, I was travelling at a top speed of 23.3 .3 knots. But now that I'm submerged below periscope depth, my maximum speed is 20% less. So, providing I'm not manoeuvring and I'm sailing in a straight line, around about 18 knots. Depth is now controlled with the F and the C keys. F to climb, C to dive. But if you want to go periscope depth, which is what I'm doing now, to try to get eyes on that destroyer, and oh yes! Well, I knew that there was a destroyer in Bravo, but I only had a 1 in 3 chance of it being a player, and it is a player, so this is fantastic. But yes, periscope depth is still pressing the G key. F and C will just have you dive to below periscope depth or rise to the surface. So it's a little trickier than before, and uh, it is possible to get it wrong and go to periscope depth when you wanted to dive, and surface when you wanted to go to periscope depth. And I'm detected. Fantastic. So I know there's a destroyer overhead, but I'm not close enough to detect him. And because I'm submerged, I now have no targeting information from the rest of my team. The one thing that I know is that that destroyer is not within two kilometers. Otherwise, I'd be getting depth charged, and I would see his position on the minimap. Okay, he's now within two kilometers. I don't recommend you do this, by the way. <laughs> Although, I mean, well, you never know. It might be a useful tactic for baiting out the enemy destroyers early on in the battle. Kind of like waving a red flag to a bull. Yoo-hoo, here I am, come and get me. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> because it's, as you can see, really eating into my oxygen reserves. Right, there he is. Well within depth charge range. So I'm expecting them to start arriving any second now. Not quite sure why he's taken his time about it. He could be hitting me with depth charges from here. Oh, here they come. Right, maximum depth now. At the moment I'm at 40 metres, but with the maximum depth consumable I can go down to 60 metres. Now that's not going to stop me taking damage from the depth charges, but I will take less damage from the depth charges. And you can see that the other submarine with me, up there at 40 metres, did not use his maximum depth consumable, and so he took maximum damage from all those depth charges. He's dead. I'm damaged. Severely damaged, but I'm not dead. However, if it wasn't for my teammates, and it was actually a bot Ismail, who rammed the Icarus, <laughs> I would probably be killed when that destroyer came around again to get a second pass off. Actually, I think the destroyer, it was an Icarus, had taken so much damage that he deliberately rammed the Ismail, uh, because he knew there was no way he was going to survive. But that's as it should be. This is what's going to keep you alive in a submarine when you're being attacked by a destroyer. Anything that you do is basically just going to delay the inevitable, going to maximum depth, reducing the damage that you take, manoeuvring, trying to throw the destroyer off your scent, make him manoeuvre, as you saw me doing in the previous battle, just delaying the length of time it takes that destroyer to get its successful attacks off. And it's going to be your teammates who actually kill him for you unless you get extremely lucky with your torpedoes. Speaking of torpedoes, I've just got a two-target ping. So I fired off my acoustic homing torpedoes, pinged him twice with active sonar, and hit the two target points, if you like, which means that those two acoustic homing torpedoes, as well as homing in on the target slightly, also now bypassed all of his torpedo protection. 
and because we hit him pretty much flush in the side, that was a double citadel. Seemed kind of easy. Well, yes and no. Um, battleships are by far the easiest target to get a double active sonar ping lock on. But that was a bot. You'll see what happens when I try to do the same thing to a player. Something else that's new. Submarines have stern tubes as well as bow tubes. And I don't think I'm actually going to need a target lock at this kind of range. <laughs> I think... I mean, we'll hit him with one ping, but I'm not hanging around at periscope depth spotted. Just trying to get a second target lock. In fact, I didn't even have time, because there's a cooldown between your sonar pings, and he was so close that my torpedoes had hit him before I could even get a second ping off anyway. But because I didn't get a second ping, they didn't bypass his torpedo protection, and so it wasn't a double citadel, in the same way that happened with the forward tubes. Now, all of you historical purists out there will probably be delighted to hear that the USS Cashlot here now has its historically accurate torpedo armament. Six tubes, four in the front, two in the stern. However, you'll probably be dismayed to hear that the stern tubes can actually be reloaded in exactly the same way that the forward tubes can, which is not historically accurate. The USS Cachalot, in common with most World War II era submarines of this size, didn't have enough space inside them to have the same kind of torpedo reloading apparatus in the stern as they did in the bows. But, you know, gameplay. Well, with the Ismail dead, I guessed that it was safe to surface and get my bearings on the available targets around me. And the risk paid off. I have not been spotted. Although I am still located because I've been banging away with the sonar. Um, and when I say located, that just means that people have a rough idea of where I am. It doesn't mean that I'm actually detected. Now, for anybody who played or watched videos of gameplay from the first version of the submarine test, and who thought, rightfully so, it has to be said, that battleships just had far too hard a time against submarines, particularly when the submarines had managed to get that double active sonar torpedo lock. Let's just see what happens when I achieve exactly that on this Fuso. You see, I've launched the torpedoes, and then I switch to the sonar. And I'm trying to get the two pings. Okay, I've managed to get the first one. And the second one is actually looking good. Right, so those torpedoes are now locked on. They're homing, and they're going to bypass his torpedo protection. If they hit him. But it's not a bot this time, it's a player. And he's manoeuvring, because he knows he's been pinged. And despite the fact that the torpedoes are technically homing torpedoes, we're not talking Mark 48 ad caps here. They're not going to zoom around and come back on themselves. So he's manoeuvred, and he's successfully managed to avoid both of those torpedoes. Now, of course, bear in mind that when you are manoeuvring to avoid the torpedoes, and if you're in a battleship, and a submarine's managed to get a double ping lock on you, you probably do want to avoid those torpedoes, because they're going to do a lot of damage. You're probably giving broadside to somebody else. Well, let's try it again. So this time with the stern tubes. I've got one successful ping. I've missed again with a second ping. Wait for the cooldown. Ping him again. And there's another successful double ping. Now he's taken a lot of damage. But despite the fact that I've got a double torpedo ping lock on him, none of that damage is from me because he's managed to avoid those torpedoes again. Of course, as previously stated, the fact that he is manoeuvring to avoid those torpedoes means that he's probably giving broadside to somebody so he's going to go down, but not directly because of anything that I did. So, kind of disappointing for me, but at the end of the day, the Fuso died. However, what you should take away from that is, in answer to the question that people were quite rightfully asking at the end of the first submarine test, how the hell am I supposed to find and kill a submarine at the end of the battle when it's just me and him left and I'm in a battleship? Hopefully that illustrated that if you are in that battleship, and you're paying attention, it's not difficult to avoid the torpedoes, even if they do have a homing lock on you. Now at this stage of the battle, avoiding my torpedoes did make that Fuso more vulnerable to everybody else, but that's no different to angling your battleship against one threat, which makes you more vulnerable to threats firing at you from another angle. And at the end of a battle, there are going to be less guns available 
well, assuming you're on the winning side, <laughs> there are going to be less guns available to take advantage of that when you're manoeuvring to avoid the submarine that's launching torpedoes at you. As you saw in the previous battle, once the submarines have run out of friends, they are not difficult to track down and kill. They give their position away every time they ping their sonar, and they're unlikely to have an awful lot of oxygen left and are going to have to spend most of their time on the surface. And if you catch a submarine on the surface and you are in something like a Fuso, you've got 12 14-inch guns, hopefully loaded with high explosive, that are really going to ruin that submarine's day. Now I'm trying to take on this Fuso. It's just a bot. I managed to get the torpedoes away. Unfortunately, they are completely unguided because he smoked up before I was able to get a target lock. And judging by the shape of those torpedoes that just appeared from behind me, there's an enemy submarine just around the corner of the island. Um, bollocks, I'm spotted. I don't know who it is who's got me spotted. It's, it's not the Fushin. Although he is shooting. Oh, shit. Okay, that was unfortunate. <laughs> I took advantage of the fact that the Fushin had smoked up uh, to get onto the surface and try to replenish some of my oxygen supplies. Unfortunately, I think I was being spotted by an enemy submarine at periscope depth. So that's a bit of a blow to morale. And I just don't have the oxygen to stay down here. Now the question is, is the Fushun still inside the smoke screen? Because if I surface now, and he's not still inside that smoke screen, I'm spotted again. And if he decides to go for me, one depth charge is going to take me out, but I don't really have the oxygen to do anything else. Okay, I'm not spotted. This is good. But I can't see the Fushin either, and if I'm going to stand a chance of hitting him with a torpedo... Oh crap, I'm undetected. This isn't good. One hit's going to kill me. Screw it, just fire the torpedoes. Okay, he did take me out. And I didn't get a target lock. I didn't have time to ping him. So those torpedoes are completely unguided. Oh dear. <laughs> well, that was a spot of luck. <laughs> Wasn't enough to win us the game, though. Um, but, well, you know, I didn't exactly make things easy for myself by charging off towards the nearest player control destroyer right at the beginning of the game in order to find out what it was like to be depth charged. Um, but I'm going to call that a successful experiment. Well, I think that's just about covered all of the bases with what's changed in the second round of the submarine test. With one notable exception, I haven't covered the radio position finding skill, which has been completely disabled on the submarine test server. And the reason for that is it was just giving too much information away in the first round of the test. Submarines who were below periscope depth could still see the direction, if not the range, to the nearest enemy target, and other ships were just getting far too much information about where submerged submarines were. They don't want that to happen anymore. A submarine that's submerged is only going to be able to see the locations of its teammates and any enemy targets who are within two kilometers, whether they be surface ships or submarines. And vice versa, if you're a surface ship, RPF shouldn't point towards a submarine who is submerged and supposed to be undetectable but happens to be the closest target. Instead, what should happen is RPF points to the next closest target. Until that submarine surfaces, of course, in which case if they're still the closest target, then RPF will point towards them. They didn't have time to make those changes to the RPF skill in time for the public test, so instead they just disabled the skill entirely, purely for the purposes of the test. There's far more detail that I could be going into, but we're coming up to 30 minutes now, and in any case, this information is all available in far greater detail on Reddit. I'll put a link down below in the video description to the Reddit post. So if you are interested, you can satisfy your curiosity there. Suffice to say that I think they're definitely making genuine progress. I've definitely enjoyed playing on the test server, uh, particularly destroyers, but submarines have been pretty cool as well. Um, there's obviously a whole lot more balancing and testing and tweaking that needs to be done, particularly when it comes to cruisers and battleships firing at submarines when they're detected and at periscope depth. So that's work that still needs to be done and will probably happen in time for the third submarine test, but I've been enjoying the second one, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video too. Because that's it for today. I hope you all have a great weekend, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.